Yeah. Yep, I'm recording it now. Okay. Hi, everyone. So welcome to the hands-on workshop of Dashboard as UI for cross-account QuickSight deployment. I'm May, and along with Ying, we'll be leading today's session. So we've allocated two hours to the sessions for you to ask questions and for us to help you debug any problems. Feel free to raise your hand or type in chat anytime for help. And as Ying mentioned before we get started, we will be using AWS CDK and a code editor today. So if you don't have CDK installed, you can go ahead and do that now with the link that Ying sent. And if you don't have a code editor, I can send you a link and you can select from one of the below. And you can go ahead and do that while I go over the overview and the agenda of what we're going to be doing today. So if you remember from our last workshop, we walked through a solution of cross account deployment using Python SageMaker notebooks. Today, we will present the second deployment option with the use of a QuickSight embedded website as a UI. So this is kind of a um, architecture diagram of the resources we will be deploying, including the dashboard as the UI. So this QuickSight dashboard will be based on a ticketing backend, QuickSight asset information and deployment status data. Um, we will have a bottom banner at the uh, bottom of the dashboard to be able to trigger the deployment of resources. Um, we will be deploying S3 bucket to host the static website to present you with a simple embedded dashboard um, that will be able to show all your active dashboard analysis, data set, data sources in your source account. We will have an API gateway to provide endpoints for embedding a QuickSight dashboard and accepting POST requests to perform deployments and an SQS queue between the QuickSight deployment API endpoint and a backend Lambda function to perform the deployment. And we will have three different Lambda functions, QuickSight migration, which is invoked by the SQS queue, and it performs the necessary deployment tasks depending on the parameters received, such as like dashboard or analysis. And this function can perform both batch and incremental deployments. Um, so batch means that it'll migrate and deploy all the resources from your source account and incremental meaning that it, you can pick and choose which assets and resources you want to deploy, such as just a single dashboard or a dashboard in it and an analysis. Another Lambda function we'll be deploying will be the QuickSight embed URL. And when invoked, this function will fetch an embedded URL of a given dashboard and return an HTTP payload to the caller. And lastly, the QuickSight status Lambda function, which will periodically query the QuickSight API for details about which dashboards, data sets, data sources, analyses um, are in your source account, and then upload it to your Amazon S3 bucket. And then this S3 bucket is then used as a data source for a QuickSight dashboard to display a centralized view of all the relevant resources. Yeah, that might be a lot, um, and we'll go over each item in depth as we deploy them but that's kind of just an overview. And to go more into an agenda and tie that all together for what we're gonna do today, we will first deploy um, three stacks to our source account, and then we will create the embedded dashboard, and then we will deploy the target account stack. Um, and lastly, we can trigger the migration. So I will pause there. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone still need more time to download the AWS CDK or a code editor? Cool. So if we have the CDK and the code editor ready, we can you guys can follow along. If not. Feel free to just listen. So first we're gonna go into our source account. Um, we need to make sure that we have two source account, one for a source and one for a target. If you don't already have two accounts you can use, you can go ahead and create another one um, or you can, yeah, you can just create another one for now. Um, I'll give everyone a moment to find which account they'll be using. I'll be using this fourth one as my source and the sixth one down as my target account.
And now if you go back to the prerequisites initial setup of the workshop under create resources, we wanna get clone the repository. If you already did that in the last workshop, you don't need to do it again. Um, so you can go to the terminal on Apple or command line on Windows and just copy the command and it should automatically clone into the repository. If you don't have Git, you can go ahead and just open the GitHub repo link. And if you click on the root photo fo folder, Amazon QuickSite SK poster, under the screen code button, you can press that and then download the zip file and just unzip that file. Either works. If everyone has downloaded the repo, now we can head back into our source account. So you're going to log into QuickSight from your source account. I have an internal Amazon Isengard, but if you can um, go ahead and log in from whichever way you can access that and head over to QuickSight. So we need to create a QuickSight user called QuickSight Migration User in both the source account and target account. This user is given permissions to the resources in the source account and also the deployed use resources in the target account. So um, right now we're just gonna create it in the source account. We're gonna go to this icon on the top right, this little person, and click on Manage QuickSight. And we're gonna invite a new user. You can go ahead and type quick site migration user. And you can add a random email for the source account. You can give it admin privileges and it is not an IAM user. And just send the invitation there. And I'll do that similarly for the target account. Head over to QuickSight. But in this case, instead of using a random email address, we're going to actually need to use um, an actual email address because we need to actually access this account. So again, quick site migration user and press enter and ask for an email. For me, I pulled up a temporary email maker. I can send that link over. I just opened a incognito tab and this is my temporary email I'm going to use. Go ahead and copy that. Paste it in, give it admin privileges and invite. Go back to the temporary mail. Resend the invitation.
should get an invitation to join QuickSite and accept the invitation and create a password for it. And you should be able to sign in QuickSite migration user as a username. Here's the password you just created. You should be able to access QuickSite. Cool, I'll give everyone a moment to set that up. So just to recap, we don't need to access the account for our source account, but we do need for the target account, QuickSite migration user, you need to access that account to see that the assets are indeed deployed over. Once you can, you are done, we can go back to the workshop under deploy to the central account. There is a set up your environment with the following code. If you go back to the terminal where you clone your GitHub repo, you can copy this line by line. So first you want to CD into the repo that you just cloned. So make sure if you, you can um, CD, if you CD into your downloads, if that's where your repo is, you can go ahead and do that first and then do this, but mine should just work. So now we're in under CDK, under this Amazon QuickSight SDK ProServe BI Ops Deployment Scripts repo. And then we want to set up a virtual environment. So we're going to do Python 3 virtual environment, set that up. And then we can go into our virtual environment. And lastly, we can install their climate.txt, the resources that we need. I'll pause there and let everyone do that. Shouldn't take too long. So now we're going to bootstrap our source account in order to deploy the QuickSight status and migration stra stack. So bootstrapping is, if you don't know, is the deployment of an AWS CloudFormation template to a specific AWS environment, the account and region. Um, if you don't have your AWS config set up with your source account, you can go ahead and go to Finder, go to Folder, and then type in this tilde slash dot AWS slash to access it. And in your credentials under default, you would add your AWS access key ID and your secret um, access key ID. And under the config, you would also add default and then put your region. Um, if you don't have a user created, you can go into your source account. IAM. Um, 
and under users, you can add a user. I'm using the QuickSight user as my default user, but you can go ahead and add a new one if you don't have one that can be used for this. You would just add users, create your username, and then pick access key, programmatic access, give it administration permissions, and it should be able to generate you your access key and secret access key. But if you already do have that set up correctly, then you can go ahead and start bootstrapping your environment. So we want to copy this first line of code and then put our account ID in there. So find your source account ID, paste it. And then go back to the workshop, copy the next line and put your region as a parameter. And then the CDK bootstrap line. You want to put your account ID followed by a slash and then your region. And that should be able to bootstrap your source environment. Does anyone have any questions about this? Okay, assuming everything goes well, now we can deploy our QuickSight status stack and QuickSight migration stack. So go ahead and uh, copy the last line of the code and paste it into your terminal. And then type in yes, and it should start deploying. So the first one being deployed is the the QuickSight migration stack. This will deploy the Lambda function, SQSQ, S3 bucket, and the API gateway endpoint for initiating migration of QuickSight resources. And the second one, the QuickSight status stack, will deploy the Lambda function and related resources to populate the S3 bucket with any active QuickSight dashboard analysis and any other assets in QuickSight in your source account. This will take a moment. Ying, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I'm all good. Uh, one thing I want to mention, um, why I designed the CDK to be the deployment, because um, CDK, you can always do the um, CI CD pipeline. Um, you can do the continue change on it. It's better than uh, cloud formation template. Cloud formation template um, is still a description language to do the JSON. It's not a programming language. Um, but with CDK, you can do the uh, programming language to really do the um, development uh, operations cycle. Yep. Yeah, probably deploying this um, these two stacks will take around three to five minutes, depending on your internet speed. Yep. And um, once you finish the CDK deployment, 
you don't have to modify it frequently. Um, this one is for the infrastructure CICD, the CDK. Um, the dashboard data sets, the QuickSight objects CICD pipeline is controlled by the Lambda function itself. So there are two different uh, concepts here. One is the QuickSight, the BI operation. Another one is the infrastructure operation. The BI operation is controlled by the contents of the infrastructure. And the infrastructure itself, you can monitor it and continue development it by modify the CDK. So that's the difference. Um, be pre prepared for, for those um, different use cases. So the QuickSight migration stack finished deploying. And we do want to note down this output under outputs, the QuickSight migration stack migration API gateway URL, which we'll be using in a future step. So you can just copy that and put it in your notes. And then we're going to wait till the QuickSight status stack finishes deploying. So after it's done deploying, we can go to our source account and go to Lambda to see one of the new one of the new Lambdas that was deployed, and we're going to run that to get the op two CSVs, one called Object Access and one called Group Membership, um, which gives us information about all our assets and users in our source account QuickSight. So Lambda. And there should be one lambda called QuickSight status. And we're going to run a test and manually run this called test. And save this. And once it gets these two CSVs, it will be dropping it into an S3 bucket. So we'll check that out in a sec. And we can just run test.
and it's complete. So now you can go over to S3. And the CDK also deployed an S3 bucket that should be called QuickSight dash central your central account ID. So this one. And you can click into it under monitoring QuickSight. It should be our two CSVs, one called group membership CSV and the other under object access with the object access CSV. Again, if you attend the admin console session before, you will know this one actually generated by the Lambda function of the admin console solution. And we are always using the admin console as the monitoring uh, of all our open source solution, just for your information. Yep. So if you, after you find your two CSCs, we can head over to Athena and create the two Athena tables that'll be based on the CSVs in this S3 bucket. We head over back to the workshop under create a dashboard. There should be two blocks of SQL code. You can just go ahead and copy the first one. This will create the group membership Athena table, paste it. And the only part you need to change is under source account ID, change that to your source account ID. You can find it in the top right corner under account ID. Paste that in and go ahead and press this orange run button. And we can see that it successfully created the group membership table on the left hand side under tables. Similarly, do that for the object access. Go ahead and copy it. You can just control all and paste it. And again, copy your account ID. Replace the source account ID with your account ID and again, press run. And there we go. Now we have the object access table created. I'll give everyone a moment to go ahead and do that. And if you wanted to, you can also click this dot 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 preview the table. And you can see the users for this QuickSight account and then the account ID and similarly for object access. Gives you a list of the dashboards and data sets in your source account, who the principal is, and just some information. So once that's built, now we're going to create the embedded dashboard. So you can head back to your source account for QuickSight. But before we do anything, again, we want to click on this top right little person icon under Manage QuickSight. We want to make sure that QuickSight has access to our S3 bucket and permission to access Athena. So under Security and Permissions, you can press Manage and make sure that your S3 buckets are selected and also Amazon Athena is selected. And you can go ahead and save that. And go back to QuickSight. Now we can add our two QuickSight data sets. So go to data sets on this left-hand side and then press new data set. We're gonna use our newly created Athena tables. So press Athena and I will create the group membership one first. We're gonna title it the same thing and create data source. And 
and my data table was created under default. You can find that data data table name, group membership, and I'm going to edit and preview data to make sure that it's correct. Yep, and then go ahead and save and publish this. And you can head back to the QuickSight homepage and do it again for the object access data set. Create data set, Athena data set, object access, create data source. Default, object access, edit preview data, and then save and publish. Give everyone a second to catch up. So now that we have our two QuickSight data sets created, we can go ahead and create a new analysis. And you can just go ahead and pick either data set and create analysis. And since we have the object access data set in, we can add our group membership data set in. So on this pencil icon, and then add data set. And we can add our group membership data set in as well. And for me, I just like to keep this as a table. So over here on the bottom left-hand side, there's this grid grid looking icon and that's a table. And I just go ahead and add in all of the columns. You can just select them one by one. And then under this dropdown, you can switch to the group membership data set and add, add visual, and similarly create, make it a table and add in the four columns. Once you're done with that, we can go ahead and publish this as a dashboard and title it, I'm going to title it Active Dashboards, and then Publish. And currently, I'm using my default QuickSight user. Um, so we need to make sure that we share it with the QuickSight migration user that we created earlier. So under this Share icon, Share Dashboard, you can either filter and share it with a specific like person, so QuickSight migration user, or I just make it easier and just share it with everyone in this account. So now we've created the dashboard that will be embedded and we want to copy the ID of this dashboard. So on your top bar, it should start right after dashboards. There should be a string of numbers and letters. You can just copy that. And this is the part where we will be starting to need our code editor. So again, I'm using Visual Studios. You can go ahead and Open that and then open. And then go to the repo that you downloaded 
um, here. And then we're going to go to the BI Ops deployment scripts and then press CDK. And we're going to open that sub repo. Give everyone a second to do that. So right now, we are going to make some edits before we deploy the QuickSight embed stack um, with the parameters and the dashboard ID that we just created. So we're going to update the dashboard ID parameter under CDK on the left-hand side, and then QuickSight embed stack. And if you scroll down on line 81, there should be a change me dashboard ID. So just delete this. And go ahead and command save, control save, save this file. And then we're gonna go set our credentials and this way it will allow us access to the CloudFront, um, the URL, which will be hosting our embedded dashboard. So we can go to under Lambda, embed, embed auth, and then the index.js file. And lines nine and 10, you can set it to your preferred username and password. Just change mine to test, and then also test. Once that done, that's done, you can go ahead and save this file as well. And now that we've changed those parameters and those two files, we can go ahead and go back to our workshop. Under deploy the QuickSight embed stack, there should be this line of code called TDK deploy QuickSight embed stack. Go ahead and copy that and either in your terminal and command line, paste and run that. Type Y to deploy these changes and press enter. While we are waiting for this, remember the migration API gateway URL we copied before. Now we're gonna take this URL and under HTML index. So under HTML, there's an index file. For line 38, We're going to replace QuickSight migration stack migration API gateway URL with the actual URL. So this is the URL for the API gateway. And once the embed stack finishes deploying, it would also under outputs have a 
embed API gateway URL. So we are going to go ahead and copy that and paste that into this file as well. So it's done, almost done. Does anyone have any questions? Once that's finished deploying, there will be the embed stack embed API gateway URL. Just copy that. And under the same HTML index file on line 85, you can, we can replace, replace this with the URL. Yep, and go ahead and save this file. And now we will go back to S3 in our source account to upload the, this index file that we just edited. Three. Should be a quick site embed bucket. And go ahead and press upload, add files. Find the index file under HTML open it and upload it.
And you, if you go back to terminal, right under that, there should be this QuickSight embed stack embed cloud fund URL. This is the URL that you would actually be pasting into the, the web browser to access um, the web page with your embedded dashboard. But for now, we have to go back into the QuickSight in our source account and make sure that we're allowing that CloudFront to host this embedded dashboard. So going back to the home page, in the top right hand side, back in the little person icon, click manage quick site. And under domains and embedding on this left hand side, we're going to enter that CloudFront URL and press include subdomains and then add. So now the CloudFront has the correct permissions to access our QuickSight dashboard. Now going back into the workshop, we finished deploying the QuickSight embed stack and next is the deploying the optional target account stack. So this will deploy the Amazon VPC, Amazon Redshift cluster and Amazon Aurora cluster. The stack is optional um, and we will skip this for this workshop since we are only going to migrate slash deploy a dashboard backed by the Athena tables to simplify everything. Um, but in the future, you can you can go ahead and deploy the stack in order to set up your Redshift or Aurora clusters. So we can head over to the next step. Now we're going to deploy the resources into our target account. So in our code editor, we're going to under CDK, go to the info target account stack and on line 16 we're going to change the self.central account id this one two three four into our actual source account id and save that And now we are going to go ahead, similar to our source account, we're going to have to bootstrap our target account in order to deploy it to that. So in this case, if you don't have a user set up in your target account that you can bootstrap to, you're going to have to do that again. So go to the management console of your target account under IAM. Under users, you're going to add a new users. Um, I've already created one called target, so I'm going to go ahead and use that one and make sure again in your AWS credentials, you create a profile for that user with the AWS access key and the AWS secret access key. And under config, one for the region. The bootstrapping takes some time. So if you guys are still creating that, I'm gonna go ahead and start bootstrapping my environment first and deploying the stack, but feel free to take your time. So to bootstrap your target account, Again, under number six, you can copy the code line by line. So we're gonna, same thing as our source account, get the account ID of our target. And then the region of our target.
and run CDK bootstrap dash dash profile and input your profile target profile name. So I was using target. So this bootstrap function is slightly different than when we did the account CDK bootstrap and then account slash region because we're bootstrapping into not our default environment. We must uh, we have to get across the credentialing by by running this instead to specifying the profile of the account we want to bootstrap. So now that it's bootstrapped, you should see that this should be your target account ID. Um, we can go ahead and deploy the target account stack. And again, at the end, we use dash dash profile and add your profile name. This should deploy the infra target account stack in our target account. Does anyone have any problems or any questions? Okay, so now that this is finished deploying, um, if you remembered, we had that CloudFront URL. You can go ahead and copy that and paste it into our web browser and a new tab. And then I'll ask you for the credentials, which we changed earlier. So mine was test and test. Go ahead and sign in. Now you should see that dashboard that we created. Now it's embedded into this CloudFront. Um, we see both of our visuals from object access and then group membership. And at the bottom, we do see the banner um, called migration tool. And again, as we talked about, you can either do incremental or batch migration. So for now, we'll try incremental migration and you can fill in the parameters. So for our source ID, Go ahead and copy your source account. Paste that in. The source region, US East one for me. And the target account ID. And then the target region. And for simplicity, we're actually just going to migrate this this dashboard over into the target account so select dashboard and for migration items we just put the name of our 
dashboard. So mine was dashboards. Be careful that if you have dashboards or analysis or any assets with the same names that it could it could cause some problems. And we can press the submit button and then submit the migration. And we'll give it a second, few seconds. So by pressing submit, it will send a message to the SQS queue, which will trigger the deployment Lambda function on the back end, um, which will actually do the deployment across accounts. So now if we go back into our QuickSign migration user in the test in the target account and yep on the right top right hand side you can see QuickSight migration users before there was nothing in here now we can see that we did indeed migrate the active dashboards dashboard over and it was updated a few seconds ago which means that it did successfully do it and under data sets, we can see also that it did migrate the object access and group membership data sets over. Yep. Does everyone be able to uh, follow it? Yeah, sorry, it's a pretty lengthy and complicated process and requires a lot of prerequisites. If everyone is silent, then uh, mm -hmm. we will think everyone is good. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, um, finish today's session, then we finish everything about the BI operations. Um, it's a huge topic and is always a pain point in the BI industry. Um, it's different from the other, I mean, standard coding language. Um, how to do the dashboard deployment is, is tricky and it's difficult. Um, and thank you to the QuickSight team being able to provide so many options for us to do that. For now, we are using the template um, and you are the partner on the NDA, so you already know that uh, we have the uh, new feature called uh, Assess as Code, it's a new action of API. With step one, we can do a more easier way to do the BI operations and with more flexibility and options. So we will continue to improve this solution to integrate with the assess code. Um, and if you would like to try uh, the assess code, go to the demo center and um, the QuickSight team already released the public uh, about the assess code uh, preview. You can try it, test it. And hopefully next year, we can release our newer version, the BI operation by using uh, assess as code. Um, and in uh, next cycle, we will talk about the granular security control. That one is about the security architecture uh, open source solution um, to do the uh, automation of security architecture configuration. And uh, we will see you there again. And thank you very much. Um, and congrats to Mate's great work. And bye bye. Thanks, everyone.